So remember how yesterday I was super happy because the sky was blue and the trees were blossoming and the world was just beautiful? <sighs> it's snowing. And they opened the pool yesterday. <laughs> hey Miranda, it's Thursday, April 2nd. Today I thought I'd talk about something that I'd kind of been thinking of doing for a while, which is giving a little bit of Concert 101. Now you, Miranda, probably don't need this because even though you are six years younger than me, you've probably been to just as many concerts as I have, which is just wrong, by the way. But I have been to quite a few people's first concerts with them, and I've noticed some things over the years that it would be pretty helpful for people to know about. Now a lot of the stuff you're going to need to know actually comes up when you're buying the tickets. Obviously the first thing you're going to be paying attention to when you buy tickets to a concert is the price. Now in my brain there are like five different categories that concert prices can fall into. The first one I think of as like the local band type of bracket, which can range from free to about $20 depending on how popular the band is, the venue, things like that. The next one up I think of as like sweet deals, which is generally $10 to $30 and it'd be for a band that's a little better known, maybe not a huge band, but someone people have heard of. The next one up is kind of the standard for popular bands for me, which I think of as the worth it bracket, where it's a band I really like, they're well known, it's a little too expensive to call it really a good deal, but it's worth the price for the concert, and that generally ranges from like 30 to 60 dollars. And then they're the ones that are from 60 to 100 ish dollars. Those are the ones where it's gotta be a band you really love once in a while, like this is a big splurge for you. Either that or you're really rich and you don't care. And then there's the really awful ones where it's a band you would really love to see and they're really popular, but it's like $130 or something. Sell your kidney. I mean, that's pretty much the only way you're going to get to go if you're not rich. The next thing to take into consideration is the venue. The smallest you're going to see is what I think of as like the open mic ones, even if it's not actually an open mic night. This is the sort of deal where it's just kind of a little cleared out area in the corner of a restaurant and you're sitting at a table and it's usually free and you just sit and listen to someone play. And then there are the ones that are in clubs. Those are generally going to be standing room only. The bigger clubs will sometimes have some seating in the back area. The nice thing about concerts and clubs is you can generally get pretty close up to the artist because the standing area goes right up to the stage. The bad thing thing about it is it's usually really hot and really crowded and there's no place to sit down if you want to sit down and if you're a small person like me everyone is taller than you and you can't see anything but club concerts tend to be a little cheaper than stadium concerts so there's that then there are concerts that are more like of a theater where it's all seating and everything and it's a little bit more room but those tend to be kind of quieter more low-key concerts that aren't as huge and then there's stadium ones which can be either indoor or outdoor those ones you'll have the choice of standing room or seating, and this just depends on your preference. If you're someone who likes to jump around and get smashed by people and have the chance to be really close to the artist, then you'll want to go for standing room, which tends to be a little more expensive. Or if you're someone like me who prefers to have a seat where no one is standing in front of you blocking your view, then you'll want to go for a seating option. And those can range from the more expensive ones in the front to the cheaper ones that are like way in the nosebleed sections where you can't really see anything, but at least you're there. Outdoor stadiums are pretty much the same deal. You'll just want to take into consideration the possibility of weather. There are also some venues that are just outdoor stages where there's just a stage and then like a big field of grass and everyone can either stand or sit down, but you'll probably be standing for most of it unless you want to be sitting in the back not seeing anything. You're going to want to go with people who actually are there to have fun and are not gonna just stand there with their arms crossed trying to act like they're too cool for this whole thing. Those are no fun. Don't even bother with them. But then on the flip side, if you have friends who want to go who you know are like badly behaved in public, just know that you're gonna have to like babysit them and get them to not annoy everybody. But then when you actually go to the concert, generally artists will have from one to three opening acts. I personally prefer to look them up ahead of time so I know who they are and whether I'm actually interested in being there on time. Also, if there's an opening act that you know you're not interested in, that's a good time to go and look at the merchandise, in my opinion. Now, merch at concerts can be pretty expensive, so you kind of have to gauge whether it's worth it for you. Generally, a t-shirt is going to be about $25 to $30, and it only goes up from there. And when you find the merch line, just know that you're going to have to be pretty assertive to get to the front. Don't be like a bully and shove your way past people, but don't let people shove past you either. Like, you gotta get up there. It usually takes a pretty decent chunk of time in between the acts for them to set up and take down. And you do not need to scream and freak out every time one of the stagehands comes out to test the drums or something. It's not the band. Trust me, when the band comes out, you'll know. 
And finally, now let's talk about how to behave at a concert. You need to pay attention to what kind of concert this is. If it's a really loud, energetic one, then it's great to scream and act crazy and get really into it. But if you're at like a soft acoustic concert, shut up. People want to listen to the music. I know you want to talk to your friends and you're there to have a good time, but just try to remember that other people are here to actually listen to the artist. And I know I'm a little biased on this one, but tell people, please let the short people stand in front of you. We can't see anything. Or at the very least, like, alternate yourselves with short people so that we have a window we can look through. It's just a really big bummer when you get to a standing room concert and there's like a wall of five guys who are 6'2", and you're 5'2", and there's just, you don't get to see anything. On the topic of standing room stuff, uh, please don't mosh people who don't want to be moshed. Please don't drop crowd surfers on people who are not prepared for crowd surfers. And I mean, obviously, it depends on the atmosphere at the concert. If you're at a death metal concert and there are people in the mosh pit who don't want to be moshed, like, get them out of there. But if you're at, like, some chill indie concert and there's a slightly upbeat song and you feel the need to ram yourself into other humans, you may want to reevaluate your choice in concerts. And for heaven's sake, if the artist themselves asks you to be quiet for a song, for crap's sake, be quiet! Uh, other things to know about is there will probably be drunk people. If it's outdoors, there will be people who are smoking. If you're a girl and there are drunk people, you'll probably get hit on. If you can't handle really loud volume very well, bring earplugs. People will probably judge you, but it's worth it if you just can't handle that very well. Food at concerts is generally super expensive and they usually do not let you bring any kind of food or drink inside. So just be prepared for that. Drink a lot of water before you go, but not too much so that you have to pee. If it's standing room only, wear comfortable shoes. Sacrifice beauty for comfort. It is worth it, trust me. If you have seating for the concert, you'll still probably want to wear pretty comfortable shoes because you'll be standing for most of it anyway when the actual headliner is on. Uh, if it's an outdoor concert, then pay attention to the weather and definitely bring sunglasses. Okay, and the most important advice I can give anybody about going to a concert is do not worry about looking cool. You are there to have fun and enjoy the artist. You do not need to stand there with your arms crossed, like acting like you don't even want to have fun. There is a difference between having fun and being rude. Like, don't be obnoxious. But being cool isn't the same thing as being polite and considerate. You're there to have fun, and if you are crabbing all over people who are singing and dancing and having a good time, then you are the lame one not them. Well, hopefully that was helpful to some of you. Miranda, I will see you tomorrow.